Hi there. So here is the 43 inch Oneida Smart TV running the Fire TV OS. In simple terms, it's like a Fire TV stick built in on a TV. So anyone who has used or seen a Fire Stick knows the user experience and the app support is very impressive. But we want to see how this OS works when it's built in on an Oneida hardware. As in how's the picture quality, sound quality, setup box video quality. So let's unbox it and we'll do a full review of this device. But before that, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss any updates. This is your friend Texing. Let's get started. So here is the retail packaging. It says Onida Fire TV Edition. It shows app support from Amazon Prime, Netflix, YouTube, Sony Live, Z5. The TV also has Dolby Audio and DTS surround support. All right, let's quickly unbox it. Inside the box is a user guide and paperwork, a wall mount unit, power cord, two plastic stands. The quality of the stands is pretty standard. Rubber at the base so it gets a good grip on the table. Screws to mount the stands as well as for the wall mount. Two AAA batteries and a Bluetooth remote. Quick look at the remote and it's very similar to the Fire TV Stick remote with a few additions. Voice search button on the top, back button, home button, D-pad, volume button. Here is the button to go to your TV setup box, mute button and hotkeys for accessing apps quickly. Prime Videos, Netflix, Z5 and Sony Live. Here is a quick comparison with the Fire TV Stick remote and it's a little bigger and that's because of the hotkeys. Overall the remotes are very very similar. So let's fix the stands to the TV. There you go, it's set up on the table. Let's have a closer look at it. The bezels are black and glossy, not the thinnest I've seen but definitely not too thick. At the bottom bezel we see the Oneida branding. Below here are two 16 watt down firing speakers. The build quality is mostly plastic and looks quite nice. This back is made of very good quality. Some ports are on the side while some are behind. On the side are 3.5 headphone jack, optical, one USB-A port and three HDMI ports. On the back are Ethernet, AV composite and antenna. Now the ones on the back are going to be very hard to reach if you're going to mount the TV to the wall. Also just one USB port, why? We need at least two. There is also a D-pad button on the TV to navigate when you can't find the remote or want to quickly change something. Very handy. Alright, before we boot it, let's have a quick look at the specifications. Multi-core CPU, 1920x1080 Full HD resolution, IPS panel display, 1GB RAM with 8GB internal storage, 16W sound output, Dolby Audio and DTS surround support, Bluetooth 5.0, Fire TV OS and official app support from Netflix, Amazon Prime and YouTube. Alright, let's plug the power cable and boot it. The setup process is easy. Enter your Wi-Fi credentials. Mostly there would be a software upgrade when you set it up. It took around 5 minutes to download and install. You need an Amazon account to log in. If you don't have one, you'll have to make one. So once the setup is complete, we are greeted with the Fire TV OS. It's absolutely identical to the Fire Stick interface. You can see the apps in tile format. Some apps come pre-installed, but some of them need to be installed from the store. Netflix, Amazon Prime, YouTube and some more come pre-installed. Let's browse through the store. You have apps like Hotstar, Z5, MX Player TV, Times Now. Man, the collection is huge and the best part is all these apps are designed for the TV and not mobile blown up apps. On the home page, you can select your input source like HDMI, antenna or AV composite wherever you have connected your setup box if you have. Let's play a video on YouTube and see the display quality. There you go, the video plays smoothly without any lag or stutter. Since the TV is full HD, 4K videos will max out at 1080p. The color reproduction is quite good. Blacks aren't the best, but that's expected from an IPS panel, but they aren't that bad either. On the flip side, IPS panels have perfect viewing angles and the Onida TV doesn't disappoint. Simply brilliant. It supports 60Hz refresh rate, making videos buttery smooth. Overall, I'd say the display is quite impressive and does a good job. Going into the settings and you see the inputs where you can again choose your input source and further you have media player where you can access internal memory files 
including files from the pen drive when connected. Here is where you connect your Bluetooth devices, connect game pads or your favorite headphones or home theater system wirelessly. Make sure Bluetooth headphones you connect support Bluetooth 4.2 and above. There is parental control option in case you want to password protect your TV from anyone using it. There is sleep timer which you can set from 5 minutes to 240 minutes. For those who like to watch TV while going to bed, it's really helpful. In the display settings, you can change the picture settings. You can change the backlight, contrast, brightness. I'm sticking to standard as it seems quite good to me. You'll have to set it separately for your setup box input. Talking about setup box, let's see how it performs. We shall start with the HD channels and then HD channels. So here are the HD channels from the setup box and surprisingly it looks quite good. Have a look at some channels. HD channels are easy on the eyes and pretty viewable. Alright, here are the full HD channels. They look absolutely brilliant. Of course that goes without saying, but it's really a treat to the eyes to watch HD content on a full HD TV. Clear and sharp. Alright, let's check out the apps. So most of the streaming apps except YouTube need paid subscription. Like Netflix, Prime Videos, Hotstar. I'm sure most of you already know that but just saying, in case some don't. If you have Amazon Prime membership, you can watch Prime Videos and Prime Music on your smart TV. Which would make a lot of sense if you're buying a Fire TV. Alright, let's start with Netflix. So here is the Netflix official app. Log in with your credentials. There you go. Wow, the interface is smooth as silk. Super easy to navigate. Let's play a movie. There you go. Videos play smoothly without any problem. You can also change add subtitles and audio from the remote easily. 4K videos will play at Full HD since the TV is a Full HD resolution device. Moving on, Prime Videos. I have to accept, Prime Videos works best on Fire TV, which is obvious because they own it. Alright, let's play a video. There you go, works great, smooth, clear, crisp. You can change, add subtitles very easily using the remote. Also tested Z5, Sony Live, Geo Cinema and they all worked equally well. Let's check out one of the games. Let's download one first. Make sure you have a stable fast Wi-Fi connection. Alright, this is downloaded, let's play it. Games play fine, but expect basic games on the store, not high-end graphic games like PUBG. Though you have Asphalt 8 and it works fine. Most of the games can be played with the remote, but some might need a gamepad, which you'll have to buy separately. Talking about the interface, it's really smooth and responsive. It feels like using the Fire Stick, which is exactly what it is. The remote has voice search, so you can use it to search content or open apps. Let's see. What is the weather in Mumbai? In Mumbai, Maharashtra, it's 33 degrees Celsius with dreary sky. Open Netflix. Here's Netflix. It also has quick access buttons for apps, Prime Videos, Netflix, Z5 and Sony Life. I so wish it had YouTube, but this ain't a Google product, hence no YouTube button. The remote is minimalistic and does the job well. For those who are thinking what about mirroring, well Fire TV OS has got it covered. You go to the settings, display and sounds and down you'll see enable display mirroring. Now this is like Miracast. You don't need to be on the same Wi-Fi network. On your Android phone look for display mirroring, screencasting, casting, Miracasting. I'm using the Redmi K20 Pro. In the settings I see casting. Click on it and you'll see Prasenjit TV. In your case, you'll see your name. There you go. There is barely any lag. You can watch videos, movies directly from your phone. Now I really know why people miss this feature so much on the Android TV. It's just so easy and convenient. Let's move to the sound. The device comes with 16W sound output and supports Dolby Audio. Let's play a sample. So as you heard, they get really loud. They sound decent, but no great guns here. The bass, trebles and mids are all flat. They sound just average, so don't expect too much from them. Alright, final thoughts? Well, it's not an Android TV, which is actually a plus point here. The OS definitely feels more fluid than Android TV OS. Also the most popular apps and games are available. But not as many as you expect from an Android TV, but still more than you need. 
coming to side loading apps on the Fire TV? Yes, you can do that too, but it solves very little purpose as most of the apps you need are already available. Setup box quality is quite good. Even if you aren't using an HD setup box, the viewing experience is decent. And of course, screen mirroring is such a breeze. Frankly, it takes all the boxes for a smart TV, but it's still not mainstream. Not many TV companies are selling the Fire TV Edition smart TVs yet. But this is a trend I believe will grow. Coming to the price, the 43-inch Oneida Fire TV Edition is priced at $22,999 and there is a smaller variant, the 32-inch which is priced at $13,999 which are just around what the competition is offering. So it's not a bad deal. On an Amazon sale time, you can get this for under $20,000. I'll leave the links below in the description. If you like to buy one, do check it out. I can easily say you won't be disappointed with this TV. It has all the smart features and apps baked in very well. Hit that like button and write down below if you want me to compare this to a 43 inch Android TV. I think it should be fun. Also don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you guys soon. Cheers.